Well, we've been in a series called The Wisdom of God. And uh, we're going to continue that this morning. I believe it's part four. Let's look at Proverbs 9, verse 10. Proverbs 9, 10 says, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and the knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. For by me your days will be multiplied, and, and years of life will be added to you. If you are wise, you are wise for yourself. If you scoff, you will bear it alone. What's scoff? <laughs> Whatever. Eh. You know, you hear something. Eh. That's not true. You know, somebody said, you can hear that. You don't even have to hear what somebody's saying. If it's scoffing, you can tell. <laughs> eh. Whatever. Verse 10 says, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. We spent some time on that. The, the fear of the Lord doesn't mean you run away from him in terror. That means you honor God, you reverence Him, coming to Him and saying, Lord, you're right, that's the beginning of wisdom. Because if you don't believe God's right, if you don't believe He is, well, you're already wrong. It doesn't matter what comes after that. If you, if you believe what God says is wrong, then you're not going to be in true wisdom. But the fear of God, honoring Him, is the beginning of getting on the right path. Everybody wants to be on the right path in general. Everybody wants the right thing. That doesn't mean they're going to do right. That doesn't mean they actually go in the right. But I'm saying, in general, people, they want what is going to be good for them. Even if they're completely selfish, it's what they, is good for them. That's what a lot of people are motivated by. But to find what is truly good in the earth, which will actually be good for you and everybody else, that starts with the fear of God. That starts with His wisdom. And it says, the knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. So anything outside the knowledge of the Holy One, something that contradicts what is His knowledge, it's not true understanding. Now let's look at 1 Corinthians 2, verse 6. These are a couple verses we've started with, and we're going to get into some specific items this morning. It says, however, we speak wisdom among those who are mature. Yet not the wisdom of this age, nor of the rulers of this age, who are coming to nothing. But we speak wi the wisdom of God in a mystery, the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the ages for our glory, which none of the rulers of this age knew, for had they known, they would not have, cru they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. Verse 13, These things we also speak, not in words which man's wisdom teaches, but which the Holy Spirit teaches, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. Now, we spent some time on that last week. There are things that are accepted generally, and we're going to touch on some of this uh, in a different way this morning, but there are some things that, sayings and such, that have been accepted by a lot of people, but they're not based on Scripture. Some people will quote them as Scripture, but those are men's wisdom. And it, the, the Bible makes a differentiation between men's wisdom and, and God's wisdom. And it says, we speak not with words which, with, uh, which men's wisdom teaches, but which the Holy Spirit teaches. Well, the Holy Spirit is going to teach the Word. The Word is true. Comparing spiritual things with spiritual. The only way you know what is truly spiritual is comparing it with spiritual, which is the Word of God. You can only interpret, and you only interpret anything truly by what the Word says. You interpret Scripture by Scripture. You interpret teachings by Scripture. You understand, you could preach a quote-unquote sermon and have a bunch of points and throw some Scriptures in there and it not be scriptural at all? You know, you kind of like, you have what you want to say, and then you attach scriptures to it. If you ever hear, you, that's why we got to judge everything we hear. Is it actually in the Bible, or is it, because you can make the Bible say all kinds of stuff. You know, script, but is the Bible actually teaching that? Well, how are you going to find that out? You're going to look at scripture to determine if something's scriptural. Just because you use a scripture doesn't mean the concept's scriptural. That's where religious ideas come from. There's whole kinds of teachings that aren't right in the body of Christ, but people are quoting Scripture, but the, the, uh, the word can be twisted. The devil can quote Scripture. Did you know that? He'll bring Scripture to you, and he'll, he brought Scripture to Jesus. 
You know, when Jesus was being tempted, he quoted Scripture. Satan quoted Scripture to Jesus, but it wasn't the right context. It wasn't the right application. It was, they were lies, half-truths. It sounds like, well, he's quoting Scripture. It's right. Are you kidding me? People quote Scripture all over the world, and it's not truth. How are you going to find that out? You've got to look at the rest of Scripture. Truth, real truth, will agree with all of Scripture. Now, if you bump up against something you can't quite reconcile, you're seeing, well, what, this is a tough scripture. Somebody said it like this, one of our instructors at Rhema. He said, just shelve it. What does that mean? Like, you know, you might have an office, and there's some shelves that you don't get too often. You might have to get a step stool to get up there, but just put it on the shelf. You know, let's say you, there's some things that people that maybe even respect, they say or whatever, but you don't quite understand, or maybe there's a tough scripture. I don't know how this works, and God... You put it up on the shelf, and you come back to it later, maybe five years down the road, you've gotten more light, you've gotten more information, and then you go to get that thing off, look at it, go, oh, well, I understand this now. But don't throw God away. Don't say, people do this. Oh, well, that, that's contradicting. The, the Bible contradicts itself. It doesn't contradict itself. You just don't understand what it's saying. You know, somebody will say, that's ignorance. The Bible's true, but, but people try to pick and choose and bring things out here and there, and then they get confused and, oh, well, uh, you know, God's not right. Well, God's right. Maybe we don't understand some things. So, you know, if something troubles you, you can stay on God's side. Stay on His side. Believe Him. Ask Him to show you. He'll help you, but He's always going to show you through Scripture. He's going to bring you uh, up and enlighten you through Scripture. Now let's look at 1 Corinthians 1, verse 18. Actually, the, this is the previous chapter from the one we just read. It says, For the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to those who are being saved it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise. Well, if it was truly wise, it wouldn't be destroyed. If it was truly going to stand... And it's God's wisdom. It's not going to be destroyed. God's not going to destroy his own wisdom. No, you're talking about things that sound good. They're not true. I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent. Where is the wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the disputer of this age? Has God not made foolish the wisdom of this world? Everybody say the wisdom of this world. Verse 21, for since in the wisdom of God, the world through wisdom did not know God, it pleased God through the foolishness of the message preached to save those who believe. Verse 22, for Jews request a sign and Greeks seek after wisdom, but we preach Christ crucified to the Jews a stumbling block and to the Greeks foolishness. Verse 24, but to those who are called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ the power of God and the wisdom of God, because the foolishness of God is wiser than men and the weakness of God is stronger than men. Look at verse um, 23 and we'll look at 24. We preach Christ crucified to the Jews a stumbling block to the... Uh, a stumbling block, and to the Greeks' foolishness, verse 24, but to those who are called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God, and the wisdom of God. So Christ is the power of God, and He's the wisdom of God. Verse 25, because the foolishness of God is wiser than men. God's not foolish, but it's saying God doesn't even have to try, and He's already way, 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 way further than any of man's ideas. The things that men are figuring out now in this century, in this decade, this year, technology, God has always known it. He created the systems that enable anything anybody's discovering. You know, somebody said, they're talking about, well, you know, it's a joke. Um, you know, these scientists had come up with a way to create life, and they're telling God, you know, we, we've recreated life. We can do this. And they come to it. He goes, well, yeah, show it to me. And they go, well, first of all, you take some dirt. He goes, uh, get your own dirt. <laughs> no, God, God created everything. He created the system. People go, oh, I discovered this. You discovered this in the framework that the creator created. No, that, nobody just came up with anything. No, but God is wiser 
than anything we could come up with. Verse 25 said, The foolishness of God is wiser than man. The weakness of God is stronger than man. Again, not, God's not strong. It means God, the fingernail of his pinky, is more powerful than anything that men could come up with. But I want you to notice it says, Christ, the power of God, the wisdom, and the wisdom of God. Look at uh, 1 John 2. Praise God. We got a lot here this morning. You are believing God with me. We are going to touch on the right stuff and get this out right. There's so much here. We're just getting into it. That was all getting into what we're getting into now. Uh, 1 John 2, verse 18 says, little, tr- little children, it is the last hour, and as you have heard that the Antichrist is coming, even now many Antichrists have come, by which we now... We know that it is the last hour. How much more now? Verse 19, They went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would have continued with us. But they went out that they might be made manifest that none of them were of us. Verse 20, But you have an anointing from the Holy One, and you know all things. I have not written to you because you do not know the truth, but because you know it and that no lie is of the truth. Verse 22, verse 22, who is a liar but he who denies that Jesus is the Christ? He is Antichrist who denies the Father and the Son. Verse 23, whoever denies the Son does not have the Father either. He who acknowledges the Son has the Father also. Now, verse 18 says, little children is the last hour, if you go back there, and as you have heard that the Antichrist is coming. There is an Antichrist that's coming, and we're closer than ever to that individual being revealed. But notice it says, even now many, many Antichrists have come. And then if you skip down to verse 22, it says, who is a liar but he who denies that Jesus is the Christ? He is Antichrist who denies the Father and the Son. Antichrist. What does Antichrist mean? It means that it's against Christ. Well, what did we read in verse 24? If you go back to 1 Corinthians 1, verse 24, it says, But to those who are called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God, and the wisdom of God. Christ is the wisdom of God. Christ is the power of God. What's Antichrist? It's anti-God's wisdom. It's anti-God's power. It's anti-God. But it's anti-specifically Christ, Jesus, the gospel. Let's go to 1 John 2.22. Just read that in the NLT. This verse we just read, but we'll read it in the NLT. Who is a liar? Anyone who says that Jesus is not the Christ, anyone who denies the Father and the Son, is an antichrist. Let's look at this in the Amplified. Who is, a, who is the liar but the one who denies that Jesus is the Christ, the Messiah, the anointed? This is the Antichrist, the enemy and antagonist of Christ, the one who denies and consistently refuses to acknowledge the Father and the Son. So it says, who is a liar but the one who denies Jesus is the Christ? who is against that, who is the enemy and antagonist of Christ. Let's go a little bit further, and then we're going to just kind of uh, lay in a little bit of a foundation. John 1, verse 1, we may come back to some of these scriptures, but we're going to definitely refer to them. John 1, verse 1, it says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Talking about Jesus. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through Him, and without Him nothing was made that was made. In Him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not comprehend it. Verse 14, And the Word became flesh, 
and dwelt among us, and we beheld His glory, the glory uh, as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. So talking about Jesus says in the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, the Word was God in verse 14, and the Word became flesh. That's Jesus, the Christ, the Anointed One. He is the Word. He came to earth. He became flesh. That's Christ. Well, Christ is the wisdom of God. The Word of God is the wisdom of God. The Word of God is truth. Jesus said in John, My, your Word is truth. So what would anti-Christ be? It would be against the Christ who is the Word, who is the Messiah. Anything that is against God's wisdom, God's truth, God's Word is anti-Christ. And this is prevalent more so than ever in the world. This spirit of anti-Christ, this attitude, this, it's a spiritual force. It's against God's truth. It's against God's wisdom. It's against God's power. Notice it said Christ is the power of God. Anything that denies the power of God. And there's a whole lot in Christianity that would deny the power of God. Not saying people wouldn't be saved, but the spirit behind what would deny the power of God and deny God's wisdom is Antichrist. And it is in the world so prevalent, men come against the things of God, come against Jesus being Lord and the Messiah. That's Antichrist. The Antichrist will deny all that. It's not Jesus. It's not Him. He's not the only way. He is not the wisdom of God. In fact, we have a better way. See, that, that you know that's, that's what we're dealing with there. We're dealing with it all over. Let's look at uh, John 8, verse 42. John 8, verse 42. Satan is the source of anything that would come against. Before we go to John 8, 42, let's go up to James 3, verse 13. Satan is the source of anything against God's wisdom, against God, against Jesus. Satan is the author. Verse 13 says, Who is wise and understanding among you? Let him show by good conduct that his works are done in the meekness of wisdom. Well, that's true wisdom. Verse 14, But if you have bitter envy and self-seeking in your hearts, do not boast and lie against the truth. This wisdom, talking about bitter envy, self-seeking, this wisdom does not descend from above, but it is earthly, sensual, demonic. For where there is envy and self-seeking exist, uh, conf where there is envy and, or where envy and self-seeking exist, confusion and every evil thing are there. But the wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, willing to yield, full of mercy, good fruits, without partiality and without hypocrisy. Notice it makes a difference between the wisdom that's from above, godly wisdom, and the wisdom that is demonic, earthly, sensual, men, men's wisdom, but not just men. It's not just men coming up. See, men think they're coming up with ideas, but they have supernatural help. Evil help. Not God. And there are all kinds of these ideas that are in the earth that are actually inspired and helped by the devil. Abortion is a demonic, evil practice. It is murdering innocent children. But you have people that even call themselves Christians that will defend it. Why? What, what is going on? It's not just a man, man idea. That's, that's inspired by something beyond man. It is against the Word of God. It is against Christ. It is against the wisdom of God. But it's prevalent. Why? What, not just, 
what's, what's going on? Why do you see people that would even, they'd say, well, I'm a Christian, but you can support killing a child? See, that, that's wicked. But in this day and age, what, what's going on in the world? What's the coordination? You know, we could, there's a number of things. Evolution is against, you know, we're not, the purpose this morning is not to go in to each individual place. And you, you could spend weeks on any one of these things and go through it. But the ideas that are against the Word of God, evolution does not line up with the Bible. It's very clear. You can tell in the Bible, God created man. He didn't create him halfway and walking around dying all the time, you know, as, as the iterations just keep going. That's, that's not what the Bible said. The Bible says Eve was the, is the mother of all living. But, again, Antichrist will deny the wisdom of God and the power of God. If you have an all-powerful God that can do anything, and He creates everything, people try to explain it, try to figure out, well, how... how how did that happen? We, if, you, if you take God, the power of God out of the equation, now you're left with a lot of questions that are not there if you just take the word of God, what it says. But these ideas, the, the background, the, uh, the, the source of them is, is Antichrist. It's, it's the source of them is the devil. It's, it's, it's sensual. It's demonic. Let's keep going here. John 8, verse 42. Jesus said to them, If God were your Father, who you would love me. He's talking about to the religious leaders here. If God were your Father, you would love me, for I proceeded forth and came from God. For I proceeded forth and came from God, nor have I come of myself, but he sent me. Why do you not understand my speech? Because you are not able to listen to my word. You are of your father the devil. He told this to the religious leaders. Jesus told this to the religious. Does that sound politically correct? You are of your father the devil, but it's the truth. They didn't understand who they were listening to. They're, in, they're, li, they're listening to the devil, and they think they're godly, but they're listening to the devil. And they are under the influence of the devil. They don't even realize it. You are of the father of the devil, or your father of the devil, and the desires of your father you want to do. He was a murderer from the beginning and does not stand in the truth. What's the truth? God's word, the wisdom of God. Because there is no truth in him. When he speaks a lie, he speaks from his own resources, for he is a liar and the father of it. But because I tell you the truth, you do not believe me. Which of you convicts me of sin? And if I tell you the truth, why do you not believe me? He who is of God hears God's words, therefore you do not hear because you are not of God. Jesus said, Satan is the father of lies. Satan is the father of deception. Satan is the influencer that is causing men and women to think on things that are not true. And the thing is, the men and women think they came up with the ideas. But they had supernatural help, and oh, Satan's crafty. You start playing in the world of ideas, he, he can twist men around and around. They think they're being rational, and they're actually being foolish. They are actually rejecting true wisdom, but they had help to do it. Revelation 12, 9 says, So the great dragon was cast out, that serpent of old called the devil and Satan, who deceives the whole world. Satan deceives the whole world said he was cast to the earth and his angels were cast with him. 
the devil and Satan who, who deceives the whole world. That's what he does. He's a liar. There's deception. It's crafty. His deception is going to be contrary to the Bible. It's going to be contrary to Scripture. It's going to be contrary to the Spirit of God. And you see so much of it in the world now. It's been there and it's ramping up, but people are accepting ideas as truth that are lies. They're wrong. They're not, they're not the wisdom of God. They're not truth. 2 Corinthians 4, verse 2 says, We have renounced the hidden things. We have renounced the hidden things of shame, not walking in craftiness, nor handling the word of God deceitfully, but by manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. But even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing. How is the gospel veiled to those who are perishing? Verse 4, whose minds the God of this age has blinded. Who's the God of this age? It's Satan. We spent a lot of time on that in other places. The Bible calls Satan the God of this age, the prince of the power, the power of the air. He is the one that's influencing unseen men's ideas, men's thoughts, if they yield to him. Verse 4 says, Whose minds the God of this age has blinded who do not believe, lest the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ. What's Christ. Christ is the wisdom of God. Satan is blinding people lest the gospel, lest the gospel and the good news of Christ comes in and shows and causes them to see clearly. That's what's going on. That's what we say, why? Are, why do people look like certain things are orchestrated? And why, why are people on the same page? Why would people accept certain ideas? Because there's a blindness and a manipulation that's going on in the world. The truth of what's going on in the realm of this earth is that there is powers, evil powers that are unseen, that are manipulating and influencing the minds of men to believe things that are completely against God and His Word and His truth. But they're in a stupor. It says... The, whose minds the God of this age has blinded, who do not believe, lest the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine on them. See, light is truth, life. That light, it, people are walking around shrouded in darkness, can't see, don't understand, and take lies as truth because they're influenced. And you see this in our, in our world so prevalent, it's so prevalent. But that, that, the spiritual force behind it, it's anti-God, it's anti-Christ, it's anti-truth. Look at Ephesians 4, verse 17. We need to be aware of, of what we're dealing with in this realm and what's going on. When you see, you ever, you can talk to some somebody or just hear what they're saying and say, how can you believe that? How can you believe it's okay to take the life of an innocent baby? How can you believe, up till when they come out of the womb and you, you kill them, how can you believe it? Because it's demonic. It's, they're blinded. They, they're not even thinking straight. They're being influenced. It's more than just an idea. It's more than just an intellectual argument. It's deception. The wisdom of God. How, what, what, do we, what do we cover the other day? What's the first step in the, excuse me, step into the wisdom of God? It's the fear of the Lord. It's bowing your knee and saying, Lord, you're right. What you say is right. If it contradicts your truth. Then it's wrong. If it contradicts what you would say, but you're God, you're the Lord. 
We have Ephesians 4, 17. This I say, therefore, in testifying the Lord, that you should no longer walk as the rest of the Gentiles walk in the futility of their mind, having their understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God. See, the life of God is there. Jesus died for the whole world. He died so that they may know God, but the life of God is there, but people are alienated from the life of God because their understanding is darkened. They don't see right. People say, well, this is all there is. That we, just, we just evolved. We just came. See, all that goes together to devalue the creation God has made. If, if you believe, if you know that God has created a person to know Him, then every person is infinitely valuable, and we know Him, that, that means you come to know Him and then everything you want to do. You, you were created by Him, so what does He say about how I operate? See, it, it flows. Everything flows from that. If there's a God, then it matters what He says. If there's a God, I'm accountable to Him. If there's a God and He created me, then I want to live my life the way He said. But if there's no God, then we just have everybody's opinions. We have everybody's ideas, and whatever sounds the best, that's what we're going to go with, and we'll just vote on it and make sure everybody's aligned, or we'll just take over stuff and make sure everybody wants to do what we're going to do. But if you believe there's a God, then it's not about what you and I think. It's not about how much we, we think we're right. If God said something else, He's right. Anything else is anti-Christ. It's anti-truth. It's anti-the wisdom and the power of God. That's what you see in the realm that we're in. In the earth, when you see people are scoffing and saying, no, this is right, and arguing when something's clearly against Scripture, you're not just dealing with men's ideas. You're dealing with satanic influence against God. God Satan hates God. And so he, he plants ideas. He planted it right, right in the Garden of Eden, came to Eve and said, and, and, spoke against God, said, is God really said? Has God, and he introduced ideas and talked to Eve, talked her out. She was in a position of walking with God, talking with God, the first created beings. And Satan came and implanted ideas, got her to go away, and then Adam to go away from that relationship. You can say, how could somebody do that? Because it's deception. Because they're blind. She, she was, she, she came back, but then Satan convinced her. Well, that's what happens. People listen to ideas. It's, these ideas are being perpetuated. They're being pushed on our children. Indoctrinate, people are indoctrinating our children with godless ideas. But you talk about an idea like evolution. Well, that, that, that devalues everybody. You know, communist governments... They, they don't believe in a God, because if you have a God, that changes the way men and women view everything. But if there's no God, you're just like an animal, just like a, just like a dog. It doesn't matter. No, but if God created you in His image, who would ever take the life of a baby? Who would ever just murder somebody? I mean, it devalues all life. It's, but it's an eye, all these ideas, they go together. Look at the rest of this verse. Eight, verse 18, having their understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them, because of the blindness of their heart. Do you see the words? Ignorance. It, that means you don't understand the reality, the truth, the wisdom that of God shows us the reality of things. But it says there's an ignorance, there's a blindness over the heart. Who being past feeling have given themselves over to lewdness, to work all in cleanness with greediness. See, they're ignorant. People buy into ignorant, uh, godless ideas. Their hearts are blinded and they give themselves over to things that they shouldn't. Let's look at Romans 1 verse 18. All these things go together. These aren't individual Aspects, they're all together. They're all against the truth of God. <clears throat> I 
Romans 1, verse 18, it says, For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and the unrighteousness of men who suppress the truth in unrighteousness. Because what may be known of God is manifest in them, for God has shown it to them. For since the creation of the world, His invisible attributes are clearly seen. That's what the Bible says. This means you, you look at the world, you, you know there's a God. You have to shut that down. You have to have somebody help you to think otherwise. Oh, there's no God. No, this, this all happened. The Bible says it's clear. You look, just a child, somebody that's just being honest, going, there's no way this just happened. This just, there's no way. You look at a baby, you say, wow, that just eventually it came to where we're formed this way. Now, you have to have supernatural help to believe that. Evil. Verse 19, because what may be known of God is manifest in them, for God has shown it to them. For since the creation of the world, His invisible attributes are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even His eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Talking about people that are rejecting Him. Verse 21, because although they knew God, they did not glorify Him as God, nor were, th unthank or nor were thankful, but became futile in their thoughts, and their foolish hearts were darkened. Talking about people rejecting God, even though they saw, they, it's clear that there's a God. They turn away from Him, do not glorify Him as God. And so their hearts are darkened. It says, does that sound like they're blinded? There's something going on. Verse 22, professing to be wise, they became fools and changed the glory of the incorruptible God into an image made like corruptible man and birds and four-footed animals and creeping things. Saying, professing to be wise, say, well, there's no God. In rejecting Him, they actually became fools. This is the attitude. People are blinded by this. We should not hate people. We should not be against people. Understand, people are duped. They're, they're, not, they're not seeing clearly. They're not under the right influence. But we need to understand what's going on in the world. We say, see it very clearly now. Verse 24, Therefore God also gave them up to uncleanness in the lusts of their hearts to dishonor their bodies among themselves, who exchanged the truth of God the wisdom of God for a lie, for the lie. Who's the author of lies? Satan. It says he can't, there's no truth in him. He's the deceiver. Well, we read, any, who is a liar? Anything that's against Jesus, anything that's against Christ, we read in 1 John. What is, what is the Antichrist? It's against the truth. It's against God. It's against the gospel who exchanged the truth of God for the lie and worshiped and served the creature rather than the creator, who is blessed forever. Saying, instead of worshiping God and saying, God, you're right, whatever you say is right, they serve the person, the people. Well, what do you think? Well, I really think we should do it this way. And now, listening to these ideas that aren't just men's ideas, but are planted Come in, listen to that. Now you're serving a person, not God. Look at the next verses. Verse 26, For this reason God gave them up to vile passions, for even their women exchanged the natural use for what is against nature. Likewise also the men, leaving the natural use of the woman, burned in their lusts for one another, men com with men, committing what is shameful, and receiving in themselves the penalty of their error, which was due. What is this referring to? It's referring to women being with women sexually, men being with men sexually, homosexuality, transgenderism, any other of the perversions on any other name. It is all against God's design. But why did it come? And it's been here before. And it's prevalent now. But, and people will defend People, no, they should be able to do this. What is that? That's worshiping the person. That's worshiping the creation rather than God. What is that? That is anti-truth. 
You can say amen. I know this isn't where you, you know, dance around and stuff, but this is, I know this is heavy duty this morning, but we're talking about the wisdom of God and the clarity. What, what is going on? What, what do you, when you see these things, there's a deception in the world. People are deceived. People that say, well, no, we feel sorry for people. They, you know, they're a good person. They may be a good person, but they're, they're, they're into something that the Bible clearly teaches is wrong, and that affects everybody. That affects society. See, when we start putting the person above God, then we'll do what people say instead of what God says. And then anything becomes okay. And we're seeing it just ramp up. You think it's just one step, one step? Look at where we've come in the last 10 years when we're talking about morality. I know I'm being blunt, but we need to understand this stuff's being pushed on our kids. You know, the, the whole transgenderism and just you, you just figure out what gender you are. and what, That's against the word. The Bible says man, male and female. He created them. If God created in a certain way, then he's right. And ideas aren't right. Men's ideas aren't right. And then, you know, there's, all these things are spoken of against clearly in the word of God. We're not going to take time to turn those. If you're interested, I can give you scriptures. We just read one. It's clearly against the word. But that doesn't stop there. It is dehumanizing people. If you don't respect people and you'll be willing to kill a baby, well, you, you'll use people to gratify desires. It doesn't matter if they're an old person or a young person. And we're seeing that. People are pushing doing things with children. It's an abomination to God. And people are surprised. We didn't get here overnight. People are accepting one step at a time. The stuff that's on TV for decades has been pushed and pushed and lit, you know, immorality and all kinds, you know, outside of marriage, all kinds of, people say, oh, well, that's okay, that's okay. It just keeps pushing the bar to where now, I mean, even right now, certain things are being, people are going, oh my gosh, why, why is this being shown? It's not surprising. It's just another step. It's evil. It won't. It, Satan will not stop. It, it's, it's not God's wisdom. It is the, in, it's the inspiration of satanic and, 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 and evil influences and uh, just an antichrist push. Verse 28 says, and even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge. See, get God out of it. Make it so there's no, God's optional. God gave them over to a debased mind to do those things which are not fitting. Being filled with all unrighteousness, sexual immorality, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, strife, deceit, evil-mindedness. They are whispers, backbiters, haters of God. Violent, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, undiscerning, untrustworthy, unloving, unforgiving, unmerciful, we know, we, who knowing the righteous judgment of God and those who practice such things are deserving of death, not only do the same, but also approve those who practice them. It has gotten to in our society where, no, you can't say anything against that. That's protected. That's right. It's immoral. It's evil. But where did this come from? This, the Bible wasn't written yesterday. It wasn't written, you know, in our current times. This was penned, you know, in the order of 2,000 years ago, a little less probably. Men haven't changed. Satan's the same. He's trying to bring the same junk in. But people are buying it, even in so-called churches, as if this stuff is okay. It's not okay. It's the wisdom of Satan. It's demonic. I mean, this should go without saying, but it doesn't anymore. It doesn't go without saying. Our culture does not recoiling at stuff. It recoils at stuff for a while, but it just keeps coming, and then people give up, and they let go. They just say, okay, well, I guess, you know, we'll give up that step. Isaiah 5.20 says, Woe to those who call evil good and good 
evil. Who put darkness for light and light for darkness. Who put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. You see this, if people are calling what is clearly wrong, that's good. And things that are good, they'll say, no, that's wrong. In fact, if you're calling, talking about exactly what we're talking about now, calling evil what it is, the, the, the world where we live in are, is saying that's evil, to call evil evil. It's saying if you call out evil, you're the one that's wrong because you hate. And if you support evil, you're good. That's where, we're all, that's what, what we're, where we are right now. If you speak truth, th then you're wrong. But if you speak lies, everybody can support the lies, but that's okay. That's the devil. And do you see, why would, people, why, why would people fall into that? Because there's a sway over all the world, the Bible says in their place. Satan has, he's got a sway over people. People don't like to hear that. Any more than the religious leaders would like to say, well, you're, you're of your father, the devil. I don't suggest you go up to people and tell them that, but we need to understand that is what's going on. Satan's subtle. And so it doesn't sound like, well, that's Satan. Well, how dare you call that satanic? How do we know what's right and wrong? The Bible. See, anything that would push against and say, no, that's not right, it's antichrist. People talk about the antichrist, the big antichrist, you know, a, a single person. But this, it said there's many antichrists. There's, there's a spirit of antichrist. I'm not saying, you know, specific spirit, but the attitude, the, the push is against the truth. That's prevalent. And you would think it would be more and more prevalent as we get into, get further into the end times. Proverbs 17, 15 said, He who justifies the wicked and he who condemns the just, both of them alike, are an abomination to the Lord. Same thing. Justifying the actions, well, that's just the way they feel. They can't help it. It's still, it's still wrong. Well, they can't help it. That, that's, you know, and it, it tries to go this way. Well, people were born that way. God didn't make anybody so that they would contradict what His Word said. This is not true. But see, that idea, I mean, you know, when you say that, the idea is, yeah, but, 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 but see, what's the but? It's against the Word of God. It's against wisdom. Anytime you hear the, yeah, I know the Bible says, but you just got into this area where, number one, not bowing the knee to God, no fear of God, and you are in the area where Satan reigns. He manipulates, that's what he wants. You know, he, he spoke to Eve. Yeah, you know, she, what did she say? He, he came to her and said, uh, you know, if you don't eat the fruit, you won't die. And she said, he first came and said, why don't you eat the fruit? She said, no, we'll die. Oh, you won't die. As soon as she opened herself up to hearing something that was against God's word, she fell into deception and she fell into hurt. And that's what you see over and over. Oh, well, it's okay, but I really feel for them. I mean, they're a good person, but it'll lead to death and destruction. We see this, you know, We've seen this in other areas that are subtle, don't seem quite as forthright. I mean, you know, out in the open, like, well, that's not the same as these things, but the idea is the same, okay? So I'm not saying these things are immoral to the degree some of these things are, but you see ideas, but this is where stuff really has broken down over time. You see ideas in marriage over time. People have their own ideas about marriage rather than what's in the Bible as a partnership in a husband and wife team. You say that now? We've gotten so, see, it didn't start there, but we've gotten so far away from that that people think everything is interchangeable and it really doesn't matter. And even the idea about a man or woman is completely interchangeable. So what's marriage? Instead of being in a blend of two um, strengths and uh, you know, design that God made to be strong, it, it may, it's been dumbed down to where it, it means nothing. And in fact, it got dumbed down a long time ago. What's marriage? You don't need to get married. You just live together. You just do whatever. And, you know, the, the wife's role or the husband's role, ah, it doesn't matter. And you saw things breaking down in our society because people rejected what God said. Ideas about raising children. Oh, well, it doesn't, you know, spanking, that's, that's bad. I could give you five scriptures at least just in Proverbs. I'd have to go see, which I'm pretty sure there's just five within Proverbs just alone. 
So I can give you a number of scriptures that tell you exactly that spanking is biblical. Now, you angry going off and hauling off and hitting somebody, that's not the same as a godly discipline with spanking a young child. And people have said, oh, that's going to hurt people. We can't do that. That's damaging. You, when you say, but, you are going against the Word of God, and then when you can't discipline somebody, if you're not going to discipline the way the Bible says, then you end up with people going away and turning out a certain way, away from where God says, and our society is saying, oh, no, that's wrong, so, so parents go away from it, and now you end up with results that weren't God's best, but people from the get-go are saying, no, you can't do that. Why? Because we think that. We, we don't like it. But we are rejecting what God said. Amen. It's all the same. It's men's idea. Well, I read this book, and it's right. I mean, some guy, and he's got some letters behind his name, and he says, you know, we shouldn't spank. Well, we're, how did his children turn out? And regardless, that doesn't mean anything. It doesn't mean that the Word of God should be thrown away. Well, this just doesn't work in the 20, you know, 2020. You're kidding yourself. There's a lot of kids that just need a good spanking. There's a lot of adults running around that just really would have, could have used some good spankings earlier. They probably need a good spanking now. <laughs> Acting like big babies. But no we, no, we couldn't do that. The Bible specifically says it. God's not wrong. But what, what would do that? It seems, you know, it's like, well, you know, you just do it. You talk to your two-year-old, three-year-old, you know, reason with them. That's not going to work. That's why God gave humans a nice, soft, cushy area in the rear end. It's not going to kill them, not going to hurt them. I'm not talking about child abuse. God's design so that they could be helped to understand. Because in the real world, when you grow up, if you make decisions, they hurt. They don't necessarily hurt your rear end. They hurt your mind. They hurt your marriage. They hurt your children. They hurt your finances. You may be in jail, and there's pain. And it's supposed to tell the child, don't disobey what mommy and daddy say, because mommy and daddy, what we're telling you is based on what God has said, and what we're ultimately training them to do is listen to God, the fear of the Lord. That's, that's what's supposed to happen. Shouldn't have to spank a 13-year-old. Spank them early. You know, we're not saying you, you knock somebody across the head. No, that, that, that's not what the Bible says. But these ideas, they're, they're anti-God's wisdom. They're anti-the Word. And they end up producing pain. And they end up producing disruption and chaos. You know, when people listen to the ideas of men instead of God. Let's read a couple scriptures as we're, we're closing here. Let's look at 2 Timothy 3, verse 1. Well, we didn't have anybody jumping up and doing a dance this morning, you know, running, being excited, or praising God. I know. The Word of God is the Word of God, though. It will help us. Amen? Hallelujah. The truth will set us free. God is good, and His ways are right. 2 Timothy 3, verse 1, But know this, that in the last days perilous times will come, for men will be lovers of themselves. Check. Lovers of money. Check. Boasters. Check. Proud. Check. Blasphemers. Check. Disobedient to parents, just covered that one, check. Unthankful, yeah, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanderers, without self-control, brutal, despisers of good, traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure, rather than lovers of God, having a form of godliness, but denying its power. You see that anti-power, anti-Christ? power of God, and from such people turn away. Well, you see that. What is that? It's not a surprise. This, we would expect all this. Let's look at one more. 1 Timothy 4, verse 1. 
says, Now the Spirit expressly says that in, the, in latter times some will depart from the faith, giving heed to deceiving spirits. What does the devil do? He deceives. He's a liar. It, it's ideas that sound, oh, well, yeah, I could see your point. See your point. All the while, contradict Scripture. Contradict Scripture. Stop right there. Come back. Bow your knee to God. We won't have a problem. But as soon as we start saying, oh, that's a good idea, good idea. Giving heed to deceiving spirits. Are there deceiving spirits? Yes. And doctrines of demons. That means teachings of demons. People don't understand. No, that's my idea. You had help. People do not want to hear that. I'm not telling you to go tell people that. But there is. People do not understand. Their idea, their thesis was actually helped move along in a direction that is devilish, and it's actually the teaching of a demon. They just got a person to go along with it, and now their name's on the front of the book. Speaking lies in hypocrisy, having their own conscience seared with a hot iron. I mean, they're past, they don't even feel it. How could somebody kill a baby? They're past it. They don't feel it. I'm not saying, I know people have made mistakes. And there have been abortions, and it causes pain. And that's what's so heartbreaking. The baby, the baby is in heaven with God. It's, people have to live with it on this earth. And, they, and people have promoted it. And it's sad because it, it hurts people's lives. But all these things hurt people. If we love people, then we'll speak the truth. You don't have to force it to them, but this, is, these, this shows us what goes on. Verse 2, speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their own conscience seared with a hot iron, forbidding to marry, commanding to abstain from, certain, from foods which God created to be received from thanksgiving by those who believe and know the truth. You just see the, the twisting, the deception, the subtlety. Satan's subtle. And this is the thing, you know, if, if, if we could get an idea and, and just understanding of the fact that ideas in the world that are promoted, they're subtly off. So many times they start subtle, but they're going somewhere. They're subtle. Satan does not so many times hit it hit people in the face with it, he gets them to believe something that's a small lie, that's something that's going to hurt them, and moves them along little by little. Like we talked about last week, we need to examine everything that we say we believe in light of the Word. Don't start yielding to something that seems right or seems like it's rational, but it's against the Word of God. Because there is more at play than just somebody's ideas. We have to understand that when you pick up a book, when you bring up a website, when you pull up a movie, when you pull up a video, you should ask yourself, what is the spirit behind what I'm seeing or viewing or reading? It can look perfectly harmless, but how did the ideas come to be? You can have a, a movie that's rated, there's hardly any movies that are rated G now. There are a few once in a while, but even PG, you know, it could look, there's nothing, it doesn't look like there's anything in it, but there's witchcraft, there's demonic things in it, and the spirit behind it is just evil. And you can pick up on that if we look. Say, wait a minute, what, what is this trying to insert into my consciousness that I'm going to take as truth and, and, and uh, act on? And understand that's what's in the world is that people have picked up on ideas, subtle ideas that Satan's been able to manipulate and blind and basically form people's opinions. That's the spirit of Antichrist. But we're not ignorant of his devices. And we know God. And the first thing is if we'll believe God, look to him, go to him, let his word be final authority, then we'll avoid these things and we can be a help to those around us. Amen.